Welcome, Life Changers. We're so happy that you're here with us today. Would you stand to your feet with us? We're going to worship and praise our God. So come on, sing this out with us. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to triumph. My God will never fail. Come on. My God will never fail. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory.
There's power in our words. There's power in our declaration. And that's something we got to understand when we come to church. We're not here to just observe something on the screen or people jumping around. We're here to fight our battles by declaring God's promises and God's truth. And so I'm just grateful that we are in a church that is passionate, that's fired up, that, and that knows the truth, that he is taking all the things that are going wrong in our lives and he's turning it around for our good so we can just trust him fully. We can leave our worries at the door because when we go out the door at the end of today, we're not picking up our worries again. We're, we're leaving them there and we're leaving them at the altar and God is taking care of the rest. So I just wanted to encourage us with that before we continue in our worship. And we're gonna do a new song in this moment and uh, this song is all about how God just loves you as you are. He loves you as you, as you show up. Whatever you are, whatever you bring to him, he is pleased with you, he is proud of you. You don't have to earn anything. You don't have to deserve anything. You don't have to work for anything. You just need to be yourself and let God love you, let God lead you, and everything is gonna work out for good, amen? Amen, amen. So we trust you, Jesus. We thank you that you see every single heart in this room. You see every single soul in this room, and you just wanna love them. So I pray that they would receive your love, that their hearts would be open, and they, everyone would just receive your love today. We thank you, Lord. I can be real with you. Say anything and not be afraid. You made me and you like what you made. You made me and you don't make mistakes. So I can be real with you. You take me just as I am. You choose me all over again. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. I don't have to prove anything. There's room at your table for me. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. You're the one he loves, so just receive his love today. He takes you as you are. You don't have to earn it. He'd choose you all over again if he had to. He would die for you again if he had to. So we receive your love. We're going to say, I know you're proud of me. I know you're proud of me. Even though I don't deserve it. Even though I don't deserve it sometimes. No, I'm not a perfect child, but I still make my father smile. I know you're proud of me. You take me, you take me just as I am. You choose me all over again. I am the one you love. I am the one you love. I don't have to prove anything. There's room at your table for me. I am the one you love. I am the one you take me as I am. You take me just as I am. You choose me all over again. I am the one you love. It's me. I am the one you love. I don't have to prove anything. There's room at your table for me. I am the one you love. I am the one you
want to sing this? It's really easy. Your love, your love never fails. Your love never fails. That's it. We're just going to sing that. Your love. Your love, your love never fails. Your love never fails. Whoa, no. Your love, your love never fails. Your love never fails. Your love, your love never fails. Your love never fails. so grateful and we worship you today with confidence in who you are so come on let's sing this out and i've tried so hard to see it it took me so long to believe it that you choose someone like me to carry your victory Perfection could never earn it. You give what we don't deserve it. You take the broken things and raise them to glory. You are my champion and giants for when you stand undefeated. Every battle you've won, I am who you say I am. You crown me with confidence, I am seated in the heavenly place, undefeated with the one who has conquered it Can fly. 
our authority today and declare this together. Because when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority that Jesus has given me. Come on, remind yourself that when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. I have the authority, yes we do, that Jesus has given me. When I lift, cause when I lift my voice and shout, Jesus is the one who has conquered it all, and we get to enjoy his victory. I love, in particular, those words, when I open up my mouth, miracles start breaking out. Who, who's ready for a miracle to start breaking out in your life? You know, come on, let's praise God in this place. You know, sometimes... We feel things in our soul. We feel things in our body because we're feeling something that others are feeling. There's something to that. Empathy is a powerful force. It's a, the ability to, to feel and to see through the eyes of somebody else and to understand maybe a little bit of what they're going through. We don't always know what people are going through. We gotta go easy on people because we don't know what storm they're in the middle of. We don't know what battle they're facing. We don't know who's hurt them, who's betrayed them, who's disappointed them. We don't know how much guilt they might be fighting. 
condemnation, accusation. We've got to realize we're the body of Christ. We're supposed to heal each other. We're supposed to bless each other. We're supposed to feel for each other. We're supposed to serve each other. Amen? So I don't know who this is for, but I, I have some experience with anxiety in my life. I've felt anxious. I've felt at times like my heart started racing. I mean, forget the 10 cups of coffee that I had this morning. That can't be it, but <laughs> I believe it's something spiritual sometimes. I heard Joseph mentioning this prophetically about we got to cast our worries and our cares on God. And I know that some of you are feeling something. I know that somebody watching right now is on the verge of a, a panic attack, an anxious moment, an anxious hour, an anxious day. And I believe there's a way out of all anxiety. I believe we need to treat anxiety as a signal to pray. Anxiety is not our enemy. Inactivity and lack of action in the midst of anxiety is our enemy. Just absorbing it and just like letting it control you is where, the, where, where, we're, where we get defeated. But inactivity is where we lose the battle. But when we take action, God always backs us up. As they went, they were healed, right? As they went, they were cleansed. As they went, there was something about they weren't going to stay in that condition anymore. So they cried out to Jesus. You know, sometimes I think we have our heart racing because right at that moment, we have the energy. Right at that moment, we have the, the chemical, the hormones and the chemicals in our bodies to shout out praise to shout out a word of prophecy, to declare our prayer to God, to speak to the mountain, to be removed and cast into the sea. I believe that whenever you feel a rush of adrenaline, a rush of anxiety, a rush of panic, that is your moment to attack. That is your moment to pray. That is your moment to praise. That is your moment to shout. That is your moment to sing. That is your moment to give God the praise he deserves. Come on, let's declare it together and praise our God. And when I lift my voice and shout, every wall comes crashing down. I have the authority. Come on, declare that. That Jesus has given me. that you need. Speak out the healing. Prophesy right now. I speak healing over you. I speak breakthrough over you. I speak deliverance over you. I speak blessing and increase and power over you. I speak supernatural provision over your life. I speak supernatural healing over your life. I speak supernatural peace over your life. I command the storms to stop. I command the storms of darkness to open up and let there be light in Jesus' name. Wherever you're feeling darkness, let there be light. Wherever you're feeling sick, I declare healing. Wherever you're feeling broken, I declare restoration. Wherever you're feeling that you don't have enough, I declare God's abundance in Jesus' name. Now come on, let's all say it together. Say in the name of Jesus, I prophesy over my life supernatural healing 
over my body, supernatural provision over my finances, supernatural protection over my life, over my family, over my church, over my community. I speak supernatural abundance for my every need. I speak and prophesy supernatural peace where I have felt anxious, supernatural joy where I have felt sad, supernatural purpose where I have felt useless. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, let's thank our God today. Come on, let's praise our God today. Now I know, I want to do something a little different today. I know we have our city campus connected with us right now. Come on, give them a hand. And I know there are many watching together in their homes. And so I want everybody to do this. And if there's nobody else watching with you, I want you to do this for yourself. But can we just take a moment? The band's just going to minister for a moment just in, in worship or music. But I just want us to take a moment and celebrate each other. So would you just, I know that you might feel uncomfortable with this, but I think we're past COVID. I think we're past the pandemic. I think we're past not shaking people's hands. Now listen, don't, don't do this if you feel sick or if you feel you, you don't want to get too close to somebody. No problem. But I want us to take a moment. I, I just walked in just as worship was starting, so I didn't get an opportunity to hug anybody. But I'm going to hug at least five people. And absolutely free, free hugs. And uh, every, one, every one of us, I want us to just take a moment and just kind of move around for a moment and just greet a couple people, hug a few people. Pray for someone. Touch somebody. Let's, 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 let's believe for the miracle of touch to heal and deliver and love. Amen. Come on, take a moment and do that. So funny. I just got, I just was, uh, Olivia just whispered to me, turn on your lav, like the microphone, like as if I wasn't, I was doing this before she was born. I was turning on my lav myself while she was in diapers. But, you know, sometimes we, as we get older, so we, we don't we don't lose our memory, do we? We we have the mind of Christ, don't we? Come on. Come on, where are some of my old people? We have the mind of Christ, don't we? <laughs> All right, listen, I want you to hear. I want you to hear this very, uh, very clearly from from God's heart to us, from my heart to you. And that is I've lived in in the last as uh, 40 years as a Christian, I have seen revivals, I've seen miracles, I've seen 
breakthroughs. I've seen times of darkness. I've seen times where heaven seems silent. I've seen I've seen our world go through wars, like multiple wars. I've seen our world go through uh, uh, recessions and inflations. And some of us remember the days I took a picture of this yesterday uh, because I, I got gas. I got some gas yesterday, I think, or this morning. Actually, it was this morning uh, on my way to church and my and it was six dollars and fifty seven cents per gallon uh, for at least the, the gas I, I was using anyway. But um, I mean, it, but, but if you went for the regular one, it's it's still five ninety nine or whatever it is. And I know you can find it cheaper wherever you guys get your cigarettes from. You can get gas and, you know, you can get two for one. You know, you want to add cigarettes to this gas purchase. And, but um, but I, I remember when we used to like when I was really young, we used to have long lines for a season of time at gas stations where cars were backed up for, you know, for I mean, city blocks waiting to get gas. And um, and so I've seen a lot in my life. But here's what I've known. And here's what has always been true when it comes to the economy is that God's economy is not connected and it's not harnessed to this world system. God's economy. Listen, God's economy always operates separately now, it doesn't mean that God's economies and world's economies don't mix and don't overlap sometimes because they, in fact, do. But God's provision for our lives and I've seen it as 40 years as a Christian, God's provision for my life has never, ever failed. Amen. And no matter how tough times get, you know, we used to say tough times never last, but tough people do. And there is something about that being mentally tough. There is something about pre prevailing over tough circumstances. And there's something about giving in difficult times. Amen. But this is what I've noticed. And I'm not a I, I think I, I probably swung the pendulum kind of for me, swung way over to the extreme when it came to money and prosperity in in the kingdom of God and the body of Christ. And then I've swung sometimes to where, you know, I don't, I'm not even going to talk about it at all. But I think I found the balance here that if we don't tap into God's system, then we are going to live in anxiety and fear because this world is not going to get better and better. This world isn't going to get brighter and brighter. Your world is going to get brighter and brighter. My world is going to get brighter and brighter. Our path. The path of the righteous is going to get brighter and brighter until the full day. But the path of a world disconnected from God, that is not going to get better. And we need to realize the only thing that we can control is what we do with what God has given us. And so I remember being so broke that all I had left, we were maybe had two kids at the time. I was going to this job that was a sales kind of kind of job where it was 100 percent commission. And I remember having five dollars. This was like 1993 or so I had five. This was the last five dollars I had. I had no money in savings. I had no I didn't have credit cards because I didn't have any credit and nobody would trust me with a credit card back then. And in that day, uh, but I had five dollars was the last five dollars I had. You think I'm going to say that I put it in the offering and then I got a million dollars or something. That's not that's not what happened. I was going through a toll booth and I can't remember how much the tolls were at that time. Remember the toll booths that used to actually collect coins and um, I remember maybe it was twenty five cents at the time going through a, a toll booth. So five dollars is all I had. And I remember and this is how the this is how sometimes government does things sometimes not saying all government is bad, but a lot of it is. 
What I'm saying, though, is. I had five dollars and I was so anxious about not having much left that I gave the lady or the guy five my five dollars. First, they gave me the coin change, 75 cents. And then I forgot that I'd given them a five and I was expecting four singles back. And I drove out of that toll booth, leaving four dollars to that toll booth collector. My last four dollars. <laughs> they gave you he gave me the coins first, maybe because they think sometimes if we just give people the coins, they'll keep driving and they won't they'll forget. I literally forgot that I was getting four dollars back. Now, keep in mind, that's my last four dollars. And I drove away. And then when I finally remembered, it was, of course, too late by then. And who's going to admit that at that point? And I just remember just putting my head on right in front of my steering wheel, pulled over and saying, God, you got to you got to help me. You got to provide. I don't know what to do. And I remember God speaking to me, just stay with it. Just keep moving forward. Just keep casting your bread upon the waters. Just keep planting your seed. Just keep giving and honoring God. This is how God's communicated to me. Those are the thoughts that I had. Those are the things that God gave me insight into. Those are the simple things that came to my mind. And, you know, I stand here today and can testify to you that going through all those difficult times and all those difficult years, God has blessed us. God has overwhelmed us with blessing. I'm not here to get anything from anybody, but I would be robbing you of your blessing if I don't encourage you to give in tough times, if I don't encourage you to stay with it, if I don't encourage you to sometimes give the last few nickels that you have, if I don't encourage you to make sure that you tithe in the high times and in the low times. Put God first. Give him the first fruits in the good times and in the bad times. Don't worry about what's going on around you. It's real and it is inflation and it is harder and it is more difficult in times like these. But if you stay with God's system, God's kingdom, if you stay with God's way of doing things, you are going to be promoted. You are going to excel. God is going to open up the windows of heaven for you and pour out such blessing that there's not room enough for you to receive it. Amen. This is God's way. There's the world's way of doing things, fear and hold back. But, you know, one of the great um, financial gurus of of the last few generations, Warren Buffett, he always says and he's still alive now, one of the richest men in the world. And he's always said, don't be afraid in difficult times, invest in difficult times, when everybody's selling, when everybody's worried, when everybody's afraid, that's the time to buy. Why? Because it goes counterintuitive to our fears and anxieties. And God has set up his system no matter how bad it is. So in the times of famine, plant when you're not getting much of a harvest and keep doing things God's way, because God's way is always the right way, the better way, the smart way, the wiser way, the house that is built on acting on God's word. will stand in the midst of the storms, the house that is built on hearing God's word, but not acting on it. That house will crumble. Both houses are going to face the same storm. And the only difference is going to be the foundation that it's built upon. And your foundation can be built on hearing God's word and acting accordingly 
or just hearing God's word and thinking you've done something by hearing it, but not acting upon it. That is a recipe for disaster. And I want to encourage you act on what you're hearing right now. Act on planting seed right now. Act on putting God first right now, because that system never runs out. That system never wears off. That system never stops working. The economy system can go have ups and downs and ups and downs. But God's system is up and up and up, up, up and away. That's God's way. Amen. Come on, let's give. Come on, let's take a moment and let's give to the Lord. Let's honor God in our tithes and offerings. If you need an envelope, our team will give you one. If you're giving online, you know what to do. If you're texting, give, you know what to do. Those of you that are watching online, you know what to do. There's so many different ways that you can give. We still have the old school ways of writing checks and filling out envelopes if you want. And by the way, we have prayer. We have uh, members of our church that are really called to prayer and intercession. And I want you to know that every one of the prayer requests that you write down ever, either on our websites or on an envelope, do you know that every one of those prayer requests are prayed over scriptures attached to them? We have prayer warriors. We have one lady in our church that just prays over every single when it, she's just given a, a certain number of envelopes and she prays over every one of them, writes down the scriptures to bless those people with praise the word of God over them. And God is blessing them. And she said, now I'm getting testimonies, right, Olivia? Um, she said she's getting testimonies now. She's kept doing this, pr planting prayers over every person that was giving and praying over every person that was uh, that was asking for a prayer request. And now she's getting she doesn't even call these people. She's just praying for them. And now she's seeing envelopes show up with the same people's names saying this is what happened. This is what God did. So. <laughs> Come on, come on up, Olivia, and finish this off. And then I'm going to share the word of God with you in very short order. So good. Well, why don't we just hold our offering up? I just have my phone on there and we'll just pray. Father, we thank you for this seed. We know that you are going to do above and beyond what we ask, think or imagine. Lord, we know that you are in this. We trust you with the soil. We step out in faith and we know that you've got us because we're going to stay with it. In Jesus name. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Awesome. You guys are wonderful. Thank you for your generosity. Yeah. Appreciate it. Such a good word. Pops. Whoa. And that's Mike's so still true. on. Oh, can you turn your lab off? Just kidding. Okay, we're good. Okay. Joan does. Um, Joan is one of our. She was one of our life group leaders. She's in her 70s, and she does pray for every single one. And it's been so awesome. So thank you for sharing that. Shout out to Joan, who is a big blessing. And then some. I just want to let you know a couple of things. You know, if you're new or visiting, you are so special to us. We appreciate you coming. We're thankful for you being here and choosing this place as your visit today. I just met a couple people here for the second time, a couple people that have been coming for four weeks. And so we just want you to know we've got a gift for you. If you want to hang with us in our cafe or at our store, you can do that right after the service. Find me or find one of our team members that have a host tag and they'll make sure you get that. No pressure, of course. We also have an online form if you feel better about that. It's on the screen for those who are watching online. You can fill that out easily in our Chicago camp is so glad that you're with us big love your way you can see anyone in the lobby after the service as well I just want to echo really quick how wonderful yesterday was for our women who were a part of our summer grace experience and I really just am so thankful for the word that my mom shared and we'll be able to uh, share that with you in a couple a couple days and I'm just so thankful if you weren't able to to be there. We want to make that available to you. And so we'll let you know how you can catch up. Our next one is in our city campus. We're coming to you on July 9th. And so for anyone in this area, if you'd love to check out our beautiful campus downtown or online if you're in the area. We also streamed for the first time online. And we had so many people from New Jersey, from Iran, from South Carolina, from all over California tuning in and being a part of that. So we're making a huge impact. And I just want to let you know what is happening tonight. Our champion youth is having Revive, and I know there's teens that are excited to be a part of that at 6 p.m. You can come to the party. I wish I could go, but I know the team has put so much, put, put so much together for your teens, and for any of our teens watching online, and you're not in Chicago, we're going to be streaming on YouTube, so you can be a part of that right after 6. Also, if you're in the young adult's age bracket, 18 to 30, Hype is 
just launched for young adults, Happy and Perfect Young People. And we just had our first event a couple weeks ago. July 1st is the next one, so you want to be a part of that. For anyone looking to connect, because Pastor has been saying this over and over, the power of connection, we have life groups available that gather in different areas around Chicago and online at all different times and time zones. And so if you want to get plugged in, that is the best next step for you. I know that was a lot of information, but maybe it resonates with someone listening. And if not, just know you're loved. And why don't we give a hand to our pastor who's going to bring the word. Awesome. Okay, guys, I want to um, talk to you about the healing power of connection, the healing power of connection. We are stepping into a season of healing. We're healing the soul. We're healing the body. We're healing our families. We're healing our uh, emotions. We're healing everything in our lives. And I want to particularly remind you of a study that was done that was that was meant to study addictions in the lives of people that were suffering from addictions. And frankly, I think we all suffer in some way from some form of addiction. We may be not, we may not be addicted to drugs. We may be addicted to alcohol. We may be addicted to approval. We may be addicted to needing attention. There's a lot of different things. We may be addicted to food. I mean, I know we that's a that's a fine line and a balance because we 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 need food on a regular basis, but we may have we may be trying to nurse emotional pain with food and we may, may be trying to uh, nurse and heal emotional pain or at least um, at, at least soothe the emotional pain we have with with drugs or with alcohol. See, the drugs in and of themselves or alcohol in and of itself, food in and of itself is not necessarily evil, just like money is not evil. The love of money, having an unhealthy relationship with money is the root of evil. But money itself is not a root to evil. Money can do good. It just depends whose hands it's in and who's holding it and who's making decisions with it. That's what determines whether money does good or money does evil. I encourage you to tune in to think like a champion. Our Wednesday podcast is a, a form of our Wednesday service now that's evolved over the last three years into right right now in this season. It's think like a champion. And I want to encourage you to tune in because the last couple of weeks and the next couple of weeks, I'm talking about having a healthy and right relationship with money. We need to have because everything in life boils down to one thing, relationships, Amen. everything in life. You know, you might say, well, I run a business and that's not about relationship. That's about money. Well, if you really run in a business correctly, you know, it's all about relationships, not about money. Money is a byproduct of satisfying customers and having a connection to people that need or want the product that you're making available. And as a result of you wanting to make their life better, you will be financially rewarded when you can solve problems uh, that people have. Right. Because all money boils down to is when it's used, all all business boils down to it's all meant to solve problems. B business all comes down to what kind of problems does this product solve? And once you realize that everything in life is about problem solving and relationships, you start putting money in its proper perspective and you start making way better decisions and you start having a healthy relationship with money. But there was a study done and I shared it with you a couple weeks ago, but I don't think I highlighted it enough. And I want to kind of remind you and refresh you. But a study, this study was done and then I'll talk about the healing power. But the study was done to study how people get addicted to drugs or addicted to anything. And so it was typically thought in the early 50s and 60s and even in the up until the early 70s that addiction was the result of being exposed to drugs. Once you taste people used to tell me when I was younger, once you taste heroin, you'll be addicted forever. Once you taste this kind of drug, once you taste this, you'll be addicted forever. I've found that there's only one thing that I've tasted in, in my life that addicts me forever, and that is Jesus. I tasted him. Amen. I tasted him. Now I've tasted I've tasted most of the drugs that are out there, not in the last week or so, but a little earlier than that <laughs> in my life. I've tasted a lot of drugs that exist in this world. And you know what? There was a time where I actually thought that I was addicted to them. But what I really was addicted to was my my brain being satisfied with neurons firing off 
in the pleasure center of the brain. We're all addicted to pleasure in one way or another. And you know that in the presence of the Lord is fullness of joy and at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. And guess who's at his right hand? We are because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. And once you understand who you are, once you understand what God has already given you, it breaks you free from all the other powers and all the other forces that the devil or that life tries to addict you to. But in this particular um, in this particular season, 50s, 60s, 70s, what uh, they would do is they would put a rat in an empty cage and two bottles of water in that cage to see which one that the rats would normally drink out of. So there was a bottle of just pure water and then there was a bottle of water that was laced with heroin. And so what they found was when they would put the rat in the cage, the rat would drink, taste both bottles, but he would always gravitate towards the bottle with heroin. And uh, almost 100 percent of the time the rat got addicted and almost 100 percent of the time the rat overdosed on the heroin. And so people thought and the science at that time thought that is the secret. Just make sure that we get rid of all the drugs or keep people away from all the heroin, because as long as they don't taste it, they'll be fine with water. But if they taste it, they'll never settle for anything else until an, until a guy came along in the University of Vancouver or in Vancouver, one of the universities of Vancouver, his name was Bruce Alexander. And what Bruce Alexander decided to do, he decided he was going to push that belief and test that theory. So what he did was he said, wait a second, all we've ever done was put rats, put a rat in a cage and put two bottles. Let's build a park. So he literally built a park called Rat Park. I told I told some of you heard me say this a couple weeks ago. So he built this park called Rat Park. And in this Rat Park, there were so many other rats and there was playgrounds and there was uh, food and there was all sorts of things to do in the, the in the Rat Park. It was like a, it was like rat heaven. Right. And all these rats, they got to enjoy so many different things and and um, like all the different toys and things that people and but mostly what was different about this cage was there were more rats in it. But guess what? They still had the two bottles, one with just water and one with water laced with heroin. And every one of the rats tasted that bottle, but none of them drank from it any further and none of them got addicted to it and none of them overdosed. It went from 100 percent overdose to zero overdoses. Why? Because of the connection to the other rats. And you might want to look at one another and say, I'm connected to you, rat. But you know what? (laughs) Look at the rat next to you and say, I'm connected to you. But just seriously, though. (laughs) Seriously, though, think about that. So what they realized was it wasn't the heroin that got them addicted to the heroin. It was the lack of connection with any other rats that got them addicted to the heroin. It was the absence of community. It was the absence of connection. It was the absence of family. And when we realize that, then we will take seriously our need to truly tap into the power of connection. And I believe that if we would grab a hold of this truth and embrace the power of connection, we will see God's best for each one of our lives. We will find health in our souls. We will find peace and freedom in the power of connection. Boy, there's something to be said about that. In fact, there's three things that we need to be rightly connected to that activate God's power in our lives. Let me give them to you. The three things that we are to be connected to that activate God's power in our lives, because it activates healing power when you are connected to these three things. Well, you know what they are probably. But the first one I'll tell you is your connection with God. Now, connection with God does not mean just inviting Jesus into your life. A connection with God means talking with God. A connection with God means listening to God. A connection with God is prayer. One of the ways that I connect with God every day is praying in tongues. Do you know the Bible says in first Corinthians, chapter 14, verse two. And let me tell you why I pray that way. Let me tell you why I pray in tongues. 
after 40 years of being a Christian, I still pray in tongues every day. I pray in English, too. I'll pray in any language I know, but those are the only two I know right now. (laughs) But let me tell you why, because first Corinthians, chapter 14, verse two says, when I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays. No one understands. But in my spirit, I'm speaking mysteries. Paul said, when you pray in a tongue, we're not speaking to men, but to God, for no one understands. But in his spirit, he's speaking mysteries. You're talking directly to God like there is no interference. There is no disconnect. There is no miscommunication. There is no misunderstanding. I don't understand what I'm saying when I'm speaking in tongues or praying in tongues. But the Bible here says God understands. No one else understands. But I'm not speaking to men. I'm speaking to God. Can anybody say amen to that? Now, this is not me trying to prove if you're not a tongue talker, then you're going to hell. I I, I just those kinds of thoughts and theologies are absurd. But if you also, on the other extreme, take the position of, well, that's not a gift that God wants me to have. You're, you are missing out on a precious right. gift that is a prayer language right. between you and God that has no interference, no static. Nothing can intercept it. Nothing can intrude it. Nothing can interfere with it. And I have been connected to God in that way. And I remember God speaking to me and say, pray in tongues, son, the rest of your life because you will always find my anointing. You will always find my power is connected through your prayer language. And I can go through all the scriptures on praying in tongues, but instead just download this book, The Power of a New Life. One of the chapters is on the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that because we have so many extremes, we end up missing out on all the blessings that God has for us, because sometimes we have these swings. And I even said, I've swung the pendulum has swung in my life to extremes with different aspects of scripture. And I believe it takes a long time to really understand the fullness of what scripture is talking about in all of our lives. We will never figure it all out. We won't understand everything in the Bible until we see Jesus face to face, because everything in the Bible is actually pointing to the face of Jesus. Everything in the Bible is meant. It's not meant to to throw rules and regulations at you. It's meant to point you to connection with God. That's what it's all about. The whole Bible is all about connecting you to God. So when you read anything in the Bible that condemns, when you read anything in the Bible that sounds that like it's 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 causing you anxiety or fear, it's because you're misinterpreting it in some way that you're connecting to the Bible as a rule book, as a behavioral manual, rather than connecting to the Bible as a connector of your relationship with God. It's a love relationship with God and it's a mystery. And many of the things are veiled and many of the things are told in parables. The Bible says and when he was alone with his disciples, he would explain the parables to them because make no mistake about it. Even the disciples didn't understand most of the parables that Jesus taught. He had to explain it to them in many cases. And we don't understand sometimes. But when I'm praying in tongues, praying in the Holy Spirit, God starts revealing to me things. I remember when we used to do the Ask the Pastor radio show every day, an hour a day. I used to take people's questions live, five to six p.m. WYLL one hundred six point seven or whatever, whatever it was at that time, or AM, whatever it was. And uh, I remember every time I would get questions that would just blow your mind. And every single time I was, uh, I somehow had an answer. And I'm not saying because I am so smart. It was that I would hear the voice of God as a person was asking their question. And I remember God speaking to me, said, you know why you can unravel that mystery, son, is because you're speaking mysteries to me in the in in your prayer language. And I'm revealing mysteries to the people through your radio you know, voice, through what you're saying and what you're. And that's what I believe for my life is what really helped me answer questions. It really helps me solve my mysteries in my own soul, because we got some We got a lot of things tied up in knots on the inside of us. Can anybody say amen? Amen. You know, talking to God about those things is the greatest. I don't I don't know if you let if you let this thing sink in. But that that middle song we did that was a newer song about how I can be real with you, God, and I can tell you anything. And I have a seat at the table and you love me and I'm the one you love. That's like John, the apostle, you know, saying about himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. Right. John, it's like he said that about himself. I'm the disciple that Jesus loved. We all need a personal revelation of how much he loves us. Right. Yeah. 
He had a personal revelation. He wrote about himself by saying, I'm the disciple whom Jesus loves, kind of like when Moses wrote about himself in Exodus, the Moses, the most humble man on earth. We probably don't need to say that about ourselves like Moses did. You know, Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible. You know that, right? And he wrote about himself, Moses, the most humble man on earth. Whenever you say you're the most humble man or humble thing anywhere, even the most humble person between me, myself and I, at that point, I'm no longer humble if I think I'm so humble. Right. (laughs) Anyway, tangent, we don't want to go there. Let's come, come back to connection with God. It's talking to God. It's relating to God and it's being able to be raw with God. It's being able to talk about anything and talk about your struggles. And I know I talk about this a lot, but and it's because I'm more reflective in my life, in this season of my life. I am more reflective. I'm I'm less reactive. I'm 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 less um, moved emotionally by the things around me. Um, I have found a, a center place of calm and a center place of of how I walk through fire and storms and how I walk through life in this season of my life, how I walk through life 10 years ago is different. 20 years ago, even more different. 30 years ago, I wasn't even walking. I, right. I was I was crawling. I was barely getting one foot in front of the other. But along the way, the most important thing to me became. The most important thing became to me the most important thing to me, and that is my connection with God. I'm already in a relationship with him simply by being born again, but I'm in fellowship with him as I'm talking to him and listening to his voice. Jesus even said, my sheep hear my voice. Boy, there's something about us realizing the power that we have in being connected to the Holy Spirit. You know, I believe that there is such a cry in humanity for real connection. There's one thing that social media has done that's good is it reveals to us our deep desire for connection. It reveals to us we want to be able to like somebody's post. We want to be able to get somebody who might be famous to us or somebody who might be somebody who's a a celebrity to us to get them to see our comment and maybe like our comment. Like I got excited once Sylvester Stallone liked one of my comments and I'm like, yo. (laughs) But it reveals to us our desire. It reveals to us our need for connection. Addiction is a substitute for connection. When you are rightly connected to the three things you're supposed to be rightly connected to, you won't be addicted to anything else. But without these three things, you will find yourself in one extreme or another. Number one, connection with God, as I already told you. Number two, our connection to one another. Now, This comes in all shapes and sizes, doesn't it? Some people we have closer connections with and some people we have further or distant connections with some people in our families. We like being around some people in our families may make us feel tension or or we don't want to be around. You know, there is all sorts of different um, aspects of of our relationships relationally. But we have to realize that connection with one another is God's idea. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, Jesus said, where two or three of you are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. There I am in the midst of them where two or three are gathered in my name. There I am in the midst of them. Well, what an amazing verse that we already know God is living inside of us through the Holy Spirit, right? We know the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. But when we gather together in his name, God is in the midst of us, meaning he's in our physical presence. He's already in us on the inside, but he starts showing up on the outside when we come together. He is manifested. We have his indwelling presence. 
through the Holy Spirit. But when we two or three are gathered in his name, we have his manifested presence. There I am in the midst of them. There I am in the middle of them. There I am in between them. There I am walking among them. He's right here in our midst right now. We think this is just a gathering of Christians. This is a gathering of us and our savior. This is a gathering of Jesus and his body. We are connected to him and to one another. And I don't know about you, but I want all the parts of my body to be going in the same direction and staying connected all the time. If my little finger gets cut off and it's over there, I can't use that anymore. I'm going to be in pain now. And one, when one member suffers, all the members suffer. There's nobody here who hasn't proven that point. And if you've ever lived life where you had to use a hammer and you missed. <laughs> Come on, who's with me now? If you've ever as a kid or as an adult even and you're using a hammer and you miss and it hits your thumb, I guarantee you every part of your body hurts when you hit your thumb with a hammer or your stub your toe. Who hasn't stubbed their toe and been like, ah, 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 like, why are you dancing? It didn't affect that foot. But you're like, ah, 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 ah. I mean, you're like now you're really praying in tongues. Ah, ooh, ah. Ee. Some of you, that's what it takes to get you to open your mouth and let it come out. But it affects the whole body. I want us to take seriously how important our connection to one another is. If we together connected can cause the manifest presence of Jesus, then just think how fast this world could get saved if we would learn how to stay connected to one another. But we're constantly experiencing broken relationships because we get offended. Somebody mistreats us. We get in a business deal with a church member and it goes bad. And therefore we just have this trauma from the, that connection. So we leave that church. It wasn't because the church was bad. You just got in a bad business relationship that you probably shouldn't have got. I don't encourage people to come to church to be looking for business. I think people should come to church looking to express and experience the goodness of God with one another and being and being trained and raised up to be disciples in this earth and to be people who the world will say, wow, look at the love they have amongst one another. Jesus said, by this will all men. John chapter 13, verse 35, he says, by this will all men know you're my disciples if you have love one for another. By this will all men know. Like if if we had a miracle happen in this church, some men would know that we're his disciples. If we had a breakthrough today in our finances, some of us would know. Some people would know that we're his disciples. If we got up and started quoting scripture, some people in the world would know that we're his disciples. But if we have love one for another, everyone will know we're his disciples. Everyone will know everyone. Come on, let's praise God. Yeah. Amen. Woo. I think we're trying. I think we're starting to get get it back. You know, when one person claps, that's a sign. Let's join in. Amen. I love being the first one to clap sometimes and getting everybody else to clap, whether it's in a, you know, uh, whether it's in a musical or whether it's in a church service or whatever. I love it because I like the waves that happen. I like the impact that connectivity happens like I'm not usually a a person that likes big crowds of people. I don't like I'm more of an introvert. But when it comes to the church, when it comes to being together with the body of Christ, I'm all in. I feel it. I breathe it. I love it. I cherish it. I cherish our times together. I cherish our moments up in prayer here. I cherish uh, seeing you guys. I cherish hearing from you. I cherish praying for you. I, I, I cherish all of it because this. Because this is the number one force of evangelizing the world in this earth. It's not how much we know. It's not how much even power that we have coming out of our lives. It's how much love we have. And if we if we walk away from each other because of offense, we're leaving the body of Christ damaged. We got to get past 
the point of being offended. We got to get past the point of being tired of each other. We got to get past the point of rubbing against each other in a wrong way. We got to get past that point. Now, we don't need to remain annoying if we are annoying people. Right. (laughs) And just, hey, you just got to put up with it because I might be annoying, annoying, but that's my gift. That is not you don't have the that is not a gift. That's a devil lying to your brain. We don't need anybody being anointing. We are we're all about anointing, not annoying. Some of us read that wrong in the Bible. I'm walking in the annoying. No, there is no walking in the annoying. There is just anointing. (laughs) You know, the woman with the issue of blood. The thing about that verse is it says she in um, Mark, Chapter five, it says she. She heard about Jesus, then she pressed through the crowd and then she touched. The hem of his garment. You know, we have to press through some crowds and I don't mean crowds of people. We have to press through. The crowds of voices. Isolating us, trying to get us without each other, trying to get us to disconnect, trying to get us offended. We got to press through those crowds. We got to press through those things that are crowding our minds, saying, I don't want to be around those people. Christians are all hypocrites. I don't want to I don't need to go to church. I don't need to be connected to church. Well, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25 says, let us not forsake the assembling together, as is the habit of some. You know why people don't go to church? It's not because they're bad Christians. They just are. They just have a bad habit of not going to church. When you have a bad habit, you need to break that habit. We learned a bad habit of like of being disconnected. And that's that's always the enemy's plan. No matter what's going on in the world is to get us to disconnect from each other. Because there's power. We just read it where two or three are gathered. My name there. There I am in the midst of the manifest presence of God to heal the sick, the manifest presence of God to deliver the oppressed, the manifest presence of God to encourage the soul, the manifest presence of God to bring joy and pleasure into your brain and into your heart and into your body. Those things come from being connected. We got to be rightly connected to three things. We've got to be connected to God. We've got to be connected to one another through the church body of Christ. And thirdly, we need to be rightly connected to this world. Now, let me tell you what I mean by being rightly connected to this world. I don't mean we need to be connected to this world's system. I mean, we need to be connected to this world's this world's humanity. We need to be connected to this world's population. We need to be connected to this world to win them to Jesus. We need to be connected to this world by showing them the kindness of God. The Bible says it's the kindness of God that leads us to repentance. It's the kindness of God. Christians have been notorious for being unkind. It's the kindness of God that leads people to repentance. No wonder nobody's repenting. There's such an absence of kindness. An absence of. Thoughtfulness. An absence of, hey, could I just pray for you? I, I'm just passing through here at the gas station or an Uber driver or whatever contact you have with this world. You need to see yourself as a life changer. In every connection you have to this outside world. We don't we got to stop being afraid of the world. We can be disconnected from this world's systems, the way that the world does things, stepping on people, gossiping, canceling everybody. That's the world's system, but that's not the world. God so loved the world. He didn't love the world system, but he loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's he's talking about people. Yeah, he loves all the planets and all that because he made them. But he's talking about people. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's his love for people. And we will never be able to love the. You know, it's funny. The thing we praise. A sinner. Of being a former drug addict, a former this guy was 
you know, uh, had all sorts of problems with money. You know, he was abused money, abused this. He did this. He, you know, all the things we we praise God about when somebody gets saved. Wow. Praise God that they came out of such and such lifestyle. But then when a Christian falls or fails in the same way that the guy who was a sinner failed in, all of a sudden we're like, oh, that guy. Wow. That lady. Wow. She's see how bad she is. See how bad he is. Like before we're saved, we treat people like, wow, you you've been experiencing this kind of sin. You've been involved in this and God brought you out of that. Hallelujah. But if somebody is struggling in some area of their life as a new Christian or as a longtime Christian, we start judging them. We seem to forget about how we celebrated them before they knew God, but we can't celebrate them now because we would be partic- partaking of their sins <laughs> rather than being kind yeah. Amen. and being humble Amen. and not judging. Right. We, if we could just get to this place of space for God's grace in everybody's life. And if we would look for the good and look to celebrate each other and look to find the good in each other, if you look for the good in me, you'll find it. If you look for the bad in me, I'll find it. Uh, (laughs) But I'm telling you, if we could get a hold of talking to God, connecting with him, enjoying him, talking to one another, enjoying one another. God doesn't give us relationships to fix one another. God gives us relationships to enjoy one another. I'm not here to fix you. Jesus is the one who does that because he's the only one that can fix me. And that's a process. He doesn't change us all at one time. Our spirit is brand new when we get born again, but our soul is tinkered with by God for years and decades. Molding and remaking the clay and reshaping it. Come on, let's stand up together. Say, well, that didn't hit the minimum number of scriptures that I expect from you, pastor, every Sunday. (laughs) I'm going to stay connected to you, you stupid thing, you. But I'm going to stay connected. Just kidding. (laughs) I'm staying connected, connected to God, connected to you, connected to this world by being kind and showing love and prayer, praying for people. If you've never received Jesus in your life as your savior, pray this out loud. Everybody pray this together. Everybody watch and pray this together. Heavenly Father. I invite Jesus into my life to be my savior. I invite you to wash away my sins. They're already washed by your precious blood. And I receive that forgiveness now. I receive a new life now. From this moment forward, I'm a child of God. If you prayed that prayer, I want to ask you to do something on the count of three. Lift up your hand. Keep your head bowed if you'd like to. But those of you that are watching as well on the count of three, you prayed that prayer for the first time. Lift up your hand. One, two, three. Quickly put your hand up now. You prayed that prayer to receive Jesus Christ as your savior and Lord. God bless you. Who else? God bless you. Who else? Come on. Let's thank God for these precious people. God bless you. Who's watching and you're lifting your hand. God bless you. Come on. Let's thank God for you and every one of you. Make sure. Come on, let's really praise God for these people receiving Jesus as Savior and Lord. If our team, if our team didn't spot you when you raise your hand so they can give you this book, please make sure to stop one of our team members on your way out and get a copy of this book. Absolutely free. The power of a new life. And it's the next steps of this Christian journey. Congratulations. Those of you that are watching online that accepted Jesus as your Savior and Lord, please uh, connect with me by downloading this book anywhere in the world. And it's absolutely free. The power of a new life. And guys, um, the end. I love you. We're here for you. If you need prayer, 
Come on up to the altar. Let's be connected to God. Let's stay connected to one another and let's connect to this world with the kindness and love of God. You're dismissed. Come on up for any prayer needs you have. And all of us as prayer partners will pray with you.